What's going on, everybody? Alex here from the Football Guys here to talk about the top three redraft winners post NFL draft. And as always, before we get into this video, don't forget to hit the bell notifications and hit that subscribe button for new great videos coming out each and every day. But like I said, today we're talking about the top three redraft winners after the NFL draft. And that player that we start with first is Jalen Hurts. Obviously, the Eagles added A.J. Brown if you weren't living under a rock. It, I mean, Jalen Hurts is going into his third year. He's getting the second year of Nick Sirianni and Devontae Smith. And last year, the biggest thing that I love about Jalen Hurts is that he was the QB1 through 11 weeks before he got a high ankle sprain. The QB1 in fantasy football. Not Josh Allen. Not Kyler Murray. Not Justin Herbert. Not Tom Brady. Not any of those guys. Jalen Hurts was the QB1 for the first 11 weeks. And over those last six weeks, after he had a high ankle sprain, one of the most painful injuries to play through, that's the only thing that took him out of the top one quarterbacks. He could be a legit top five QB this year, especially when you add someone in like A.J. Brown, who's going into his fourth season now. You get a year two of an improving Devontae Smith. Dallas Goddard is still ascending. This offense is still ascending the second year in this new system. Things are looking up for Jalen Hurts even more than they were last year. I'm so excited about what he's going to do. Another guy that I'm insanely excited for is James Conner. The Cardinals only added six-round rookie Keontae Ingram, and his only other competition is Eno Benjamin, who had 41 total touches last year. And I think them adding Marquise Brown via trade opens up this offense similar to like it did for Joe Mixon with Jamar Chase. Like I think that when you add other weapons like that, especially for the running backs, it opens up the rest of the field for them potentially more touchdowns like James Conner last year at 19 touchdowns in 16 games. I think we could see something similar with how this offense is shaping up to be. But the biggest thing I love about James Conner is Chase Edmonds is gone and they didn't add real competition. Chase Edmonds had 12 touches per game last year in games that he played with Conner. There's no way that, you know, Benjamin or Keontae Ingram is going to get anywhere near those kind of touches. And James Conner, I know people love to say that he's, you know, injury prone. He doesn't play a lot of games, but he still played at least 13 games in four out of five seasons. If I'm drafting a running back in the second round right now, and you said he's going to play at least 13 games, I'm going to take that every single day of the week. I know his career high is still only 15 games, but I think James Conner is still a phenomenal value in drafts and a huge winner. And another thing that we want from James Conner is some more pass catching and Chase Edmonds had 53 targets last year that are going to be gone. And I think most of those are going to be going to Conner, who was actually a pretty good pass catching back last year. And the final winner we have today is Darnell Mooney. Darnell Mooney is probably the biggest winner of this entire draft. Maybe not for the offense, but the bears only added Valus Jones and Byron Pringle. Like that, that's literally his only competition. Byron Pringle, not that great. Velas Jones was a six-year college player. He's coming into the NFL as a rookie in 25. He turns 25 on May 10th. This guy was not great in college. I don't think he's going to be great in the NFL. And Darnell Mooney's only competing against him, Byron Pringle, and Cole Komet. They have 144 vacated targets last year just from losing their third, fourth, and fifth leading target share getters. And Darnell Mooney literally had a 26.7% target share last year which was 11th in the entire NFL, and then they lose their third, fourth, and fifth leading target getters again. What could Darnold Mooney could literally get a 30% target share this year, and it would not shock me whatsoever. They don't have any real competition. This offense obviously is not going to be very great. I don't think that Darnell Mooney is going to have super high touchdown upside, you know, with Justin Fields and, you know, one of the offenses that will probably be among the worst in the NFL. But if you want to lock in a guy for 150 targets and you have to say, okay, who are we going to do it outside the top, you know, 10 wide receivers? Darnell Mooney is probably pretty high on that list for guys that you think are going to get 150 targets. And if he's going to get that, I think he's going to be a massive value in drafts. Darnell Mooney is a guy that is a huge winner and a guy that I will be drafting a lot of this year. But that is it. That is our top three redraft winners going into this next coming season. And as always, subscribe, hit those bell notifications because Football Guys has new great content coming out each and every single day.